Uh, I don't base my beliefs on what other people think. I listen to other people. I take their opinions. But I base my belief and other Christian witnesses of job base their beliefs, I know, on the best available reasons. What we believe we have the best available reasons to show. And so when it comes to Jah, we don't start with Jah. We don't start with the Bible to prove our belief in the Bible or in the biblical God. We start with life. We start with what we can show. We know we're alive. We're here now. We're living. There are, it, there are various forms of life, and there have been at different times in Earth's history. So we know life is here, and we believe we can show scientifically that life only comes from existing life contrary to what a lot of scientists would have you believe. And, and they would have you believe that life is an accidental formation and that it has mutated <clears throat> and accidentally, <clears throat> excuse me, essentially resulted in the formation of all these different species that we see today and that we have fossil evidence of in the past. So we start with life and what we can prove about life and that it is all it is something that always comes from existing life. There's never an exception. There is no example of something non-living coming to life. Now, there are examples where <clears throat> intelligent beings like humans, <clears throat> excuse me, can resuscitate a person or generate in the case of some experiments um, compounds <clears throat> like amino acids. So you have a famous experiment in the 1950s done by Miller, Urey, two scientists that put together an apparatus, controlled the conditions, and generated uh, an amino acid. And they used this to try to show that the accidental formation of amino acids was possible. And they believe, of course, that amino acids are the building blocks of life, which you commonly hear even though it's not true. Amino acids don't build life. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein and other physical properties, materials within our body uh, that amino acids can, can be a part of, but they themselves never build life. You could have a human corpse that just died. It has all the amino acids that it had when it was alive, but now it's dead and there's no life because the amino acids are, <clears throat> are not the building blocks of life. Again, they're the building blocks of protein most often. And so protein is not life. It's a component that is a part of living organisms and a part of things like muscle tissue and other physical uh, properties, components of our physical structure. So when they say things like that, they're starting with a mistake and ending with a mistake. And so when they construct an, uh, an apparatus and create the conditions and they bring their intelligent minds to bear to create an amino acid and then claim that that could have happened on its own and then been the origin of life that, as we know it, it doesn't follow. It's a non sequitur. It's illogical. And it doesn't make any sense from a scientific standpoint because they're not only excluding themselves, the ones who put together everything necessary for the very experiment they conducted, which is essentially a smaller scale version of what we say Jaw did. But they are actually misrepresenting what the formation of that compound could have led to. Even if we were to grant that somehow an amino acid were to form on its own, it would still have to have the conditions <laughs> and properties that Miller-Urey um, put forth. But if we somehow were to exclude Miller-Urey, and um, start with this, this premise that amino acids could form accidentally, that still wouldn't be a basis for concluding that life could form accidentally. So you have mistake compounded with mistake and it just gets worse. So, but it can be difficult. It can be difficult for people to recognize from such intelligent people uh, that this kind of mistake is actually happening, uh, but it is. And, and you don't need to be a genius to see it. You just need to stop and think about what they're actually saying. Because if a scientist, or anybody for that matter, claims that something is true, and they can't break it down for you, they can't explain it in simple terms so you can either say yes or no, or ask a follow-up question, then there's something wrong. They're either not as smart as they say, or they're, they're wrong. Because if you're really smart, and you understand something, and you're trying to communicate it to somebody, 
then there should be no problem. It should simply be a question of whether or not you have doc demonstrated your view is adequately supported by the best available reasons. That's not what Miller or Uray have done or what scientists since them have done. They do just the opposite. They present these good reasons for why an intelligent life would be necessary to create an apparatus, the universe, the structure within which things are made and then control the conditions in, until things come about the way you intended. So the very experiment that has been used to try to support the view that things happen accidentally, such as the formation of amino acids, is actually proof that you would need an intelligent source and that intelligent source would have to create conditions that would then result in the intended life form. That's what we see all around us. And when you look at the life forms that exist today and in the past, they are perfectly suited for their environment. There's nothing out of place. There's not these half form mutated creatures that are just working their way through evolution. Everything is perfectly symmetrical. Everything is well suited to its environment, capable of reproducing within its own species. And so uh, we have good reasons all around us Faith is never just belief absent good reasons. It's never that way. Anyone who tells you faith, I, I believe in God because I have faith, or, or science is based on reason and faith is not, is, is completely mistaken. 